there, this is Tim, and uh, today we're going to bring you the 21 essential Jim Morrison locations right here in the Los Angeles area. And we've set this tour up in a geographically um, linear fashion. We're going to be hitting three distinct areas, Santa Monica, Venice, uh, West Hollywood, and finally Laurel Canyon. So without further ado, uh, let's uh, find a parking spot and start right here at the Santa Monica the Santa Monica Pier is an L.A. landmark by any stretch, uh, but it is also an important location for a lot of doors in Jim Morrison history. Many of the doors' photos by Henry Diltz were taken right here under the pier, as well as it being a place that a younger Jim spent hours hanging out and crafting poetry, among them the lyrics to the end. About a quarter mile down from the pier is the very stretch of beach where in 1965, uh, Jim Morrison had a chance meeting with former UCLA film schoolmate Ray Manzarek. Uh, as legend has it, Morrison sang Ray a couple of songs and they decided to form a band. Another school of thought is that Morrison knew exactly what he was doing and made himself conspicuous on the beach where he knew Ray, who was already in a successful band, lived near uh, so he could get the desired result. Either way, rock history was made here on that day. So just a stone's throw from the beach is Fraser Avenue, right in the Ocean Park section of Santa Monica. Uh, behind the house and over the garage was Ray and his future wife Dorothy's tiny apartment. In 1965, shortly after they met on the beach, uh, Jim moved in with them. And by the way, how cool were Ray and his wife? Uh, Morrison was poor and basically homeless at the time. They obviously had a lot of faith in Jim Morrison. Virtually around the block at what is now this storefront was Olivia's Soul Kitchen. Uh, this is where Morrison and other struggling UCLA art students would gather to scrounge a meal and talk music and poetry. Uh, Jim loved it here and was always the last to leave and it inspired the lyric, uh, let me sleep all night in your soul kitchen. So continuing south, just off Oceanfront Walk, we come to the Ellison Suite Hotel here in Venice. Uh, it still looks much the same as it did in 1965 when Jim often stayed here in room 205 with his girlfriend Pamela Curson. Uh, in 2015, when it was being renovated, uh, Pam's diary was found hidden in the room. As legend has it, a poor and penniless Jim Morrison spent a summer squatting on the rooftop of this Venice Beach apartment building. Uh, here Morrison wrote his first serious poetry, uh, some of which would be turned into door songs like Moonlight Drive and Summer's Almost Gone. So continuing south along the boardwalk, we come to the location of the door's earliest rehearsal space, uh, where the first complete lineup of the band played and practiced. Obviously, the landscape has changed to make way for some of these newer buildings, but according to Ray Manzarek, who actually lived here, it was on the beach near the corner of Ocean Walk and North Star, uh, just south of Washington Boulevard here in Marina Del Rey. So our last stop in Venice are the Venice Canals themselves. Uh, this was a part of LA that the Doors hung out in often, and since we're in the area, it's just a really cool neighborhood to experience. By the way, if you'd like to see more of some of these old Venice haunts, uh, there's a terrific video called Ray Manzarek in Venice, and we'll leave a link down below. All right, uh, we've got about a 30-minute uh, drive through the west side of Los Angeles uh, to reach our destination in West Hollywood. So here we are at UCLA, and uh, this, of course, is the college that uh, Ray Manzarek and Jim Morrison met at film school before you know they ever even thought of the doors. And it's a great uh, drive through. It's pretty essential. And if you have the time, even if you can park and walk around, it's a really cool walk, a really cool way to spend an hour or so. Uh, we're going to continue on. The next stop is uh, Sunset Boulevard and the Whiskey Go. Jim Morrison tour would be complete without paying a little homage to the Whiskey A Go Go. It's pretty well documented that the Doors were the house band here from May to August 66, 
and opened for virtually every band during that period, including uh, Buffalo Springfield, Them, Love, The Turtles. And the very last song they performed during their residency here was The End. Uh, Jim was peaking on acid, and it was the first time they had improvised the whole middle section of the song about killing his father and screwing his mother. Uh, Not surprisingly, they were fired the next day, but that performance was enough to cinch them a deal with Elektra Records. Now we're going to walk up about five storefronts and come to the location for what used to be the London Fog nightclub. This was the home to the first regular gigs the Doors did, and they earned about five bucks a night here honing their craft. A lot of the songs that appeared on their debut album were actually played live for the first time right here. So now we're headed uh, down about a quarter mile down Holloway Drive to the intersection of Santa Monica Boulevard and La Cienega. And that three or four block area was virtually uh, Morrison's entire life uh, later on in his Doors career. It's where he ate, it's where he lived, it's where he drank, it's uh, where he worked. So we're going to go check it out. Uh, Our first stop, which is now Black Ship Restaurant, was the site of the Doors offices and rehearsal studios. Uh, Known as the Workshop, this building was the hub and the heartbeat of their operations and is where virtually all the Doors material was rehearsed and refined. Uh, It also served as the makeshift recording studios for their last and arguably finest record, L.A. Woman, and it's where Morrison recorded his vocals in the bathroom right here. All that remains of this incredible piece of American history is this small plaque. Less than one block south on La Cienega is the former location of the Doors record label, Electra Records. Uh, There was a recording facility in the basement, and Jim and the Doors spent a considerable amount of time here recording Soft Parade and the incomparable Morrison Hotel. Uh, Directly across the street was the location of Pamela Cresson's Themis Boutique. Uh, It was an ultra-hip clothing store, but it also, and probably mainly, uh, served as a hangout for Pam and Jim's friends. Uh, Up the stairs is the former location of the highway offices, Uh, The movie Jim produced and starred in and was never released. Uh, It eventually became part of the wonderful Doors documentary, When You're Strange. Just across Santa Monica Boulevard, about a block up, is the Alta Cienega Motel. Uh, This absolute flea bag of a motel is still operating much as it did in the late 60s when it served as Jim Morrison's de facto permanent residence. Uh, Room 32 has been dubbed the Jim Morrison Room, and you can stay in it if you've got the nerve and the 84 bucks. I highly recommend you try to get a look before someone decides they need a new strip mall and tears this glorious dump down. Uh, By the way, if you'd like to check out these West Hollywood locations a little more thoroughly, uh, we've got a more detailed video. Just click the link at the end of the film. Literally around the corner down Holloway Drive is Morrison's favorite watering hole, Barney's Greenery. And the good news is it still exists in all its original rock and roll splendor. Uh, This is a must-see on the Morrison tour and a fantastic place to have a bite, uh, play some pool, and imbibe a beverage or two. Uh, Make sure you have a drink at the bar and soak up a little of the decadent history. It still looks and feels much the same as it did in the 60s and 70s. So let's hop in the car and go about six blocks east to the last known permanent residence of Jim Morrison and Pam Cresson uh, before she left for Paris a couple months before Jim did. About four blocks north is the Chateau Marmont, uh, which has been home to Hollywood royalty for 90 years and where Morrison partied on many occasions. Uh, The most memorable episode came one night when he attempted to jump from the roof to a room using only a drain pipe. Uh, He fell, permanently injuring his back and causing him chronic pain for the remainder of his days. So now we're going to head up to Laurel Canyon and Love Street. This is the circa 1967 shared Laurel Canyon house of Jim and Pamela that the Doors made famous with the song Love Street. Uh, Right next door to the famous Canyon Country Store, this corner was and still is the absolute hub and heartbeat of all Laurel Canyon. Uh, The city has deemed this a historic site, which is ironic considering that they had no love for Morrison or the Doors during the day. Back on the road and up Laurel Canyon to Lookout Mountain Drive, 
almost all the way up at the top and we come to this fairly obscure little house. Robbie Krieger and John Densmore were roommates after their debut album hit, and Jim spent a lot of time here working on songs with them as their on-again, off-again roommate. Uh, there's a great story about this house. Uh, Robbie Krieger had come up with some music for a song, so Jim decided to take a walk to find some inspiration. Uh, legend has it he headed up the hill a quarter mile or so and came to this location, and coincidentally our last stop on the tour. Uh, this view here inspired him to write the lyrics to People Are Strange. So here we are at the top of Lookout Mountain, and uh, I think this is a great place to wind up the journey uh, with the real L.A. woman beneath us in all her splendor. So now is when I shamelessly ask you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we love bringing these to you, and uh, your subscription is very much appreciated. And lastly, I'd like to say thanks to uh, Jim Morrison and the Doors for making such great music. And, uh, you know, as they say, when the music's over, turn out the lights. So.